Hey everybody, David Henry here from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to take you inside of DMXs, one of my absolute favorite pieces of lighting software for people who are just starting out with lighting, especially if you're lighting bands. And I want to share with you the five things that I wish I knew before I started with DMXs. I've learned a lot over the years as I've gotten deeper and deeper into the software and taught lots of people how to use it. And so now here are the five things I wish I knew right away when I got started. All right, so the very first thing I really wish I knew before starting with DMXs is that when you've got multiple channels of the same type, like these red channels, on the same type of fixture, like these two Java 4 bars, you could double click and it's going to load all those channels. It's going to open those all up for you so that you can work with them all together. Now, this doesn't work across different fixture types, but still, if you've got multiple of the same type of light, it's going to work great. So you can literally, if you need to select all the greens, you can do that. Or say you need to select the greens and then select the blues. I could hold shift. I could double click the blues. And now I've got all the greens, all the blues. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 channels that I selected very quickly by just double clicking. Now, the next thing um, we'll click here to deselect that I really wish I knew about DMX before I started is this guy right here. So this right here is not just a pretty picture. It's not just part of the interface, but it's actually an XY coordinate for controlling moving lights. So if you have moving lights, I'll go over here to this page and you select the pan and tilt channels, you can now use this XY coordinate to move the tilt on the vertical and the pan on the horizontal. And so it allows you to work with, with both axes of movement at the same time with, with your moving lights. And so, you know, that can be really helpful. And I, I can't believe for the longest time, we, from when I first began with DMXs, um, for a few years probably, I just looked at this and thought it was a pretty part of the interface. And sure enough, it's not. It's actually something very functional. Now, the next thing that I wish I knew before also deals with moving lights, and it's the shapes macros. So you may be familiar with the macros up here that you can click into and you can do a variety of different things within these macros, choose some colors, build a chase. But one of the things that's kind of hidden here is under shapes. And shapes is not patterns in the lights, it's not a static position, but it's actually a movement. There's a circle, there's a diamond, figure eight, heartbeat, random, square, and triangle. So you just select one of them after you've selected multiple pan and tilt channels like I've done here, and then it goes. Not only that, um, this is now working with the oscillator, but you can go in here and you can actually go and adjust the shape the size of it or the phase, which is like about, um, you know, how it moves from point A to point B. You're able to adjust either of those through that menu. Now, if you're new to DMXs or maybe you've used it before, you notice that if I go to a blank page here, I right click and I go to my fixture library. There's a lot of lights that aren't in this. And actually, it looks like it's cutting off at the bottom of the video, but there's a lot of lights that aren't in here. Okay, a lot of these are older. And to tell you the truth, it's, it's kind of a tough conundrum because they could include everything in here that's new, um, but that would require constant updates. It would always be changing and it would get really long to have both the new stuff and the old stuff. So you can go online, you can download your fixtures from fixtures.dmxs.com and I'll link to a video here that shows you how to create them if you don't know how to do that. Once you download them, you generally go into your, your Windows system or your Mac, you put them in a particular folder, and you're good to go. In fact, I'll link to an article here that shows you where to put that. So you can put them in the folder, and then they'll show up here. You know, say it's an American DJ unit, it'll show up in the American DJ folder, okay? But one thing you can do is make your own folder. So if you're making your own lights, it kind of makes sense to do this. And you literally just go in to the DMX library folder. You create your own folder with your own name. Um, I recommend putting a special character at the front of it so it gets sorted first in the list. 
So we're going to make that folder, um, put our fixture files in it. And then when we go to patch them, when we go to add a fixture here in DMXs, we can now right click, go to fixture library. And here I've created a folder called one, my fixtures. I put the one in front of it. So it shows up first. Um, you can use special characters, um, but windows doesn't always like those Mac likes different ones. Um, a number works great. Even the letter a can get you started on um, put you at the top there. And then you're always going to find your fixtures in the folder that you created. Now, if you want, you can even go over, say you've got some, some Chave uh, LED mushrooms. You can copy that file in the folder structure and put it in the My Fixtures folder just so that you have all your fixtures together. Now, of course, like any fixture file you add in to DMXS, if you do transfer this to a different computer, you'll want to make sure to transfer that whole folder and uh, then you'll have those on a different computer as well. Now, the next thing I, I really wish I'd known about is pretty simple, but it's about these DMX channels. So we know that if you've used DMXS at all, and if you've watched this video at all, that if we right click and go to the fixture library, we can add in our different fixtures here and um, then we're able to control them. We also know, as I mentioned, that you can create your own fixtures if they're not here in the library. But if you do need to control something that's on a specific channel, say like channel 79 here, you can just set your DMX address there and you can move this fader and it's going to output DMX. So you don't necessarily have to patch the fixtures. You don't have to right click and add them here from the fixture library. Um, doing so just helps keep things label, keep things organized. I highly recommend it. But if you're in a pinch and you need to control something quick, you don't have time to create a profile or search for one then it will work fine just to bring up the channels that correspond to the light you want to control. And every channel in DMXs, as long as it's not channel masked, is going to always output when you move it. So do keep that in mind as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you had, you might want to check out my full course, The Lighting Basics Blueprint, and its follow-up from Zero to Lighting Hero, which will show you how to use DMXs to make an amazing band lighting show. You can check out those all at Learn Stage Lighting Labs. I'll make sure to have a link here. And be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you so much and have a great day.